Challenges seem to surround us everywhere we look. But the good news is, solutions are right within us. You can be the solution if you decide to take initiative and stay committed. Sharon Jessica has more. Sharon, karibu sana to Youth in Action. I would love to ask you, what is the backbone of your journey? Kipurusha uh, Binti was started in 2018. And uh, the aim was to reach out to young girls, adolescent girls, mm -hmm. and young women in the informal settlement areas of Kisumu with the information on se sexual reproductive health and menstrual hygiene. Mm -hmm. So our aim was to end gender-based violence in the informal settlement areas and the rural communities because these are the areas where uh, GBV is very rampant. So this is why we started the Perishabinti. But along the way, we also developed an interest in creating awareness in sickle cell mm. because this is a disease that not so much or so many people speak out or talk about it. Mm. So just as we uh, measured on HIV AIDS, we talk it to anywhere, everywhere, and people have the information. Uh, we really wished that it happened the same for sickle cell. That, that's why we thought it's wise to start this so that we could also create awareness on the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what inspired you to, to start sickle cell awareness? Uh, growing up, there are so many people that have died of sickle cell that could have been prevented. But then people are not aware, they don't have the information, and some of us or some of our communities think this is witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So through these uh, experiences, I learned that our community needed to know more and much about this disease. And uh, I've had friends who have sickle cell, and uh, I was also inspired by their stories, their journey, how they have fought it. And uh, uh, I'm also a sickler, and uh, that's why I decided to start this initiative, because uh, you can only walk a race that you know. Mm -hmm. So I am well aware of it. That's why I felt so inspired to create awareness, mm -hmm. talk to the community, so that we can all know and have information about sickle cell, mm -hmm. so that we stop the, uh, the rural communities and the information going around that it's a witchcraft and many other things that, uh, that are embodied around sickle cell. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so being a sickler, how has your, exp how has your experience been? Uh, it hasn't been easy. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I will say I've had supportive family and supportive friends and supportive doctors that had made it an easier journey. Mm -hmm. But even with that, it's still difficult because sometimes you are able to take care of yourself and maybe survive the disease, but you can't survive things that people talk around you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not the disease that kills sickle cell patient, it's the stigma and the discrimination around them in the community. So if you have this information, you can be able to stop the stigma in the community. So for me, I will say that I've been able to come this far because of my friends, the, uh, the com some of my, uh, the people I've met on my, on my journey of life because they've be been supportive even in me creating awareness. They want to learn more and also they want to spread the news to the community about sickle cell. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so I've been inspired by my journey and also by others around me. Interesting. Yeah. So what was the initial goal? When did you just decide, okay, let me start creating awareness about this sickle cell? What was that thing that made you realize that, hey, I need to create awareness? Uh, so there are so many. I've, I've experienced uh, stigma. Mm -hmm. I've seen my friends experience discrimination and stigma around them. And also in our community, I've seen people living with sickle cell being stigmatized and also the, the kind of life they have lived hasn't been so nice or good. So I will say there's a time we were in Kombewa, uh, Kombewa Health Center, where we went to create awareness. And most of the people believe this is, um, uh, which sickle cell is a witchcraft and the myths around sickle cell 
that are very surprising and you can't believe them so these are some of the things that made us that it is very important to create this awareness to make the community know that uh, just as maybe HIV or maybe cancer it's just a disease like the other and if it's well managed someone can live as long as they want mm -hmm. so these are some of the things that made us that to see this in a different perspective yes oh just shortly what kinds of myths are those because there's someone who actually believes them because had you any myth yeah what kinds of myths are those? Uh, some of the myths is that someone living with sickle cell cannot pass the age of 18 mm. and people living with sickle cell cannot give birth or even carry babies but i have friends who have given birth to beautiful babies i have friends who are almost 40 people who are almost 30 but they have sickle cell I have friends who are 45, almost 50, but they have sickle cell. It's how we manage it and how we take care of ourselves mm -hmm. and the kind of support that we have around us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, how you manage it? What yeah. does that mean? How do you manage sickle cell? Sickle cell is managed with drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have different drugs that we take and we also take care of ourselves. But sorry to mention, I didn't tell we could be talking about sickle cell, but someone doesn't know what sickle cell is. Mm. So I will just say sickle cell is a genetic uh, disorder that makes you have pains and maybe severe pains, if you say that. Like a normal human, that's uh, red blood cells mm. are round in shape. But a sickle cell patient, their blood cells are sickled. An example of the sickle that you used to have is rice. Mm -hmm. So whenever, uh, whenever the, there are much sickle uh, bloods in their body, mm -hmm. it inhibits the flow of the blood. And that gives them the severe pain mm -hmm. that is called crisis in sickle cell. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that they go through. And uh, some of the uh, challenges that sickle cell patients face is that... Uh, these drugs are very expensive. They can't, you can't afford them. Like for those people living in the rural communities, those people that we, we look, we, we measure on, our awareness measure on them. They, they can only afford maybe shelter, food, and take their children to school. But sometimes it's difficult to, for them to consistently be able to buy these drugs for their children. So we get that this is a, a challenge to most of them, and even I wouldn't say only those in the rural places, but even those of us that are just able, but sometimes it's very difficult because we don't have that money all the time. Mm -hmm. So these are these drugs are very expensive, and also the the treatment is very expensive at sometimes because they are always on and off in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are some of the challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, are uh, all the health centers or the ones in your community aware of this uh, sickle cell identification management strategies? Yeah, I will say uh, they're aware how to manage pain and even refer because when they are not able to take care of a sickle cell patient, they're allowed, them to, re they're allowed to refer them to a better health care. Mm. But then sometimes our health facilities, or I wouldn't say the doctors, but sometimes they're slow to act in some situation where a sickle is brought to the hospital, mm -hmm. leading them to to death because they, have been, they haven't been taken care of immediately because sicklers need immediate attention. If you delay for some time, they're gone because sometimes they have severe pain. Mm -hmm. So I would just like that we be keen in attending to these people. Even if you have others in the hospital and someone comes with sickle cell, kindly just take care of them because these are people that will be well in one minute and they are, next time you are, you, you are called that they're dead yeah, yeah. and are there any significant experiences you've had during this journey yeah there's very many experiences we've had mm -hmm. and i will i will say that um talking about success in my community i've op i've been an eye opener to most of my friends and even the community members because whenever we create awareness people want to know more mm -hmm. about what is this sickle cell how does it happen what can we do how can we help people really want to know more about it mm -hmm. and even sometimes we go we have outreaches where we uh, go to hospitals just to talk to people we living with sickle cell mm -hmm. and when you're there and you talk to them 
they are able to understand what this is because after, at the end of the day when you tell them that you are not just talking about it at a, at a perspective of a medic but you are talking about it at a perspective of a patient or a warrior yeah so they they feel you are in their shoes and this makes a a, a big impact to us because they are able to go outside there and again the courage to take good care of themselves more because they know someone is living yeah. just yeah someone is out survived this and they can too mm-hmm. so these are some of the things that give us the strength to continue doing what we do mm-hmm. and even people living with with sickle cell with just talking to them and telling them this is how you should take care of yourself avoid this do this it it's they they get this information and also spread them to the community mm-hmm. so that we are able just to create more awareness for more people to know more about this so that you can minimize the rate at which people are saying this is a myth and the rate at which uh, patients die because of negligence interesting yeah. so how do you reach out to your community through your organization uh, in the out in the awareness of sickle cell yeah what we do is that we we have meetings where we reach out to the community we just all meetings in the community uh we call for community meetups where we organize and meet the community and talk about sickle cell we also have online inter- interactions where we have zooms and talk about challenges uh sickle cell face we don't only talk about sicklers but we we talk about the community too we like teach the community what is to be done why they sh- should stop the stigma and the discrimination why they should have a listening here to these people living with sickle cell mm-hmm. so we don't only target people living with sickle cell but we target community community has a all we also target the young girls and the, the, the young women in the, in, in the community where we talk about being tested with, with, with before you get married it's very important you know your genes mm-hmm. so that you don't get married with someone uh, maybe the biology is too tough to some people but mm-hmm. as and ss you're not supposed to get married because you're going to have ch- a child who is ss who has sickle cell anemia and sometimes it's it's a hard journey bringing up a child with sickle cell because of the finance the depression and everything so we create awareness on this and also we create awareness on on screening newborn screening when you have a child and then uh, you are a young mother you should take your child to be screened whether they have sickle cell mm-hmm. so these are early detection that we really emphasize in our dialogues and in our conversations in the community you're talking uh, uh, the biology coming from you is uh, so much like a medics are you what is your profession uh i'm a development strategist mm-hmm. i've also done social work and community development mm-hmm. but i've my journey has made me want to learn more about sickle mm-hmm. so whenever i talk i want to be talk i want to talk about what i know I don't want to be telling people that I think mm-hmm. because someone will say that you're not sure about what you're telling us. So I want to talk uh, from a perspective where I know the information that I'm giving out. Mm, that's true. Yes. That's true. I've also learned AS and uh, SS. SS and how is the response from the community? I will say the community are uh, we have go- have a, a good reception or they are receptive to us because they are, they have list, they are able to listen. uh they are able to ask and they really want to learn they want to know and this is a good gesture for us because we get people who call who even whatsapp just to know that i have a child living with this what am i supposed to do we even get people who are not kenyans who just want to have more information mm-hmm. because we we do so much on our social media even sometimes we don't have other activities but we just create awareness with some information that we relay mm-hmm. so that people are aware so these are things that has made our 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 kids because the community have embraced what we do because they really want to learn yeah and uh, speaking of reach out do you have supporters or partners you partnering with in your organization for this agenda yeah we have had so many partners come on board to support us on this and uh, Uh, we have uh, partners even from Nairobi who are doing the same thing mm-hmm. uh, and i realize that we have a a huge awareness or support systems in Nairobi around sickle cell 
compared to Kisumu. Mm-hmm. So I thought like in Kisumu it's not the Hawaiianness is not that uh, that heavy. That wa- that's why it made me realize that we ha- we should be heavy on this. We should mm-hmm. make this heavy. So we have partners that we uh partnered with Sikusel Federation of Kenya. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh we have Power Dada that we partnered with in this. We have um the way she carries from Zimbabwe these are people that have helped us through this journey and we have other partners that I'm not able to mention but they've really been supportive uh towards our journey in creating awareness in uh, in Sikisel and even some doctors in 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 Kisumu like Dr. Koth mm-hmm. they've really come on board to help us just create awareness and make sure that uh, uh the, the the rate at which children are born in Kisumu Uh, children living with sick cell are born in Kisumu goes down because we get that now at as per now 21 out of 100 children are born with sick cell I have sick cell trait in Kisumu yes, yes. so we have partners who have come on board to help us create awareness and also make this a success wow yeah and you spoke of your social media platform would you mind mentioning them in case I want to join and see what you do yeah we have a social media platform facebook we are peperusha binti uh twitter at peperusha b then we have instagram peperusha underscore binti yes and are there any challenges you've had along the way and how did you maneuver them uh yes we will say we have challenges uh because uh, sometimes it's it's hard like financial uh, challenges because we always need to create awareness on sick cell but then as creating awareness like for now we've always called fundraisers that to support uh children from the marginalized community mm-hmm. from the un- un- underprivileged families to purchase pa- purchase drugs so like last year we hold a coffee for champions sickcell fundraiser coffee for champions uh it's it's a sickcell fundraiser that works towards supporting uh five or 10 children living with in the underprivileged families to purchase monthly drugs so when we call upon uh, people to maybe fundraise uh, we organize these events and we we request people to buy tickets for us to raise this amount mm-hmm. to buy drugs for this uh, these children sometimes you know everyone is not going to embrace your idea mm-hmm. and some of some these are some of the challenges that we we we, we go through but uh, no matter that we haven't been able to give up because i believe uh when you want something even if you don't have resources you just go for it because somebody is going to see what you're going we are doing and they'll come on board and say how can i help mm-hmm. so even as we do this we uh we look for that people will come on board and ask us how can they help and they're able to to help so we have have had even challenges in the uh in the community where we have uh when we create an awareness some people think that maybe we have the money to support people living with sick cell but then we are not so this is a challenge to us because we feel that we could be in a position to support but now we are not able to support mm-hmm. so it's also a challenge that we face and we hope that someday we will be in a position to support mm-hmm. you talked about the coffee drive why coffee and how is it done uh coffee for champion sick cell fundraiser was an idea that I nurtured from last year. I thought that because uh September is Sick Cell Awareness Month, what will we do to people who are sick class that are not, not able to buy drugs? This was an idea when COVID came. But then during COVID not so many people would afford even a meal. So I I I, I had it in mind but I was like I can't do it now because some people sometimes people can't come on board so much because people are still struggling. So last year when I uh, I started it, it was an idea to help people living with sickle cells who are not able to buy these drugs because when covid came some lost their job and so that. So coffee for champions uh, sickle cell fundraiser. It's coffee because we thought coffee was a bit cheaper for people to come on board. Mm-hmm because maybe if it's a dinner dinner will be more expensive so coffee enables us to bring people together people from different diversity just to come and support 
people from underprivileged communities living with sickle cell to purchase their monthly drugs because as i said before these drugs are so expensive i would say that me i can manage to buy them every time mm. yeah even me sometimes i struggle too but that's why i thought it was wise what about that person who only has one meal a day are they able to so that's why i came up with the idea of holding a coffee and i'll say I've, in the first year i've got a good support mm. a beautiful support from people so last year we supported like 10 children purchase drugs and these are drugs that are so expensive mm. yeah. so when people start something they have a set destination in mind is that the case for you or how did you do it we want to reach, reach the larger nyanza and that is our aim mm. not just by uh, information but by even services because so far, so good. The journey has been challenges, but we have so much success. We have so much to be proud of mm -hmm. because we've changed lives. We've reached out to many girls in our community. We've changed the perspective of some of our community members around sickle cell. Mm -hmm. So for me, I would say it's still a journey for us, but so far, so good. We are somewhere. Interesting. Yes. And uh, what kind of support would you need the community to help in order to make this a movement success? Uh, what I would need the community to support with is just to embrace what we are doing. And also whenever we call for, uh, maybe like now we are calling out, we are calling people to purchase tickets for the coffee. We request them to come, come out and support us in this. And not just our community. I would love to really request our government, from the county government to the national government, if they could uh, provide drugs for people living with sickle cell, give free drugs for people living with sickle cell, just the way they have done for people living with HIV AIDS. Because uh, sometimes uh, children die not because of they're not taken care of, that not about negligence, but then they lack their drugs. They're not able to afford these drugs every month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also I would request them to strengthen the medications on sickle cell. Like make our doctors, doctors understand deeply about sickle cell. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes children outside there have died of negligence. They're taken to the hospital, but then the doctors have not given them the attention that is required. So I would really request our government and even our community to come out and support us in creating awareness mm -hmm. and also provide drugs to people living with sickle cell. Mm -hmm. And what can you tell people who desire to create something worthwhile as you have done? When you have an idea, mm -hmm. maybe you don't have the resources, but just start with whatever you have. When we started Fipirusha Binti, I tell you, we didn't have anything, mm -hmm. but we were able to just give information. Call people to come together, give information. Mm -hmm. The next time you tell someone that, you know, I want to do this, I've been doing this, and this is how far I've reached, can you chip in and support me? They'll say yes, because they've seen what you've been doing. So whenever you have an idea, just take off with it. Mm -hmm. Don't give up that you don't have resources, don't give up that, how will you go about it? Whenever you have an idea, just implement it. Whatever you, if without resources, just talk to people around you. Maybe some people will, will not understand what you're talking about or how you want it to be done. But even without resources, just start it. Yes. You're a champion for sickle cell. I would love to congratulate you on this journey. May the Lord bless you because you're doing a good work. Thank you so much. You have had it. If you have an idea, if you feel you have a solution, go ahead and start. Even without the resources, go ahead and start. And everything else will come along the way. The friends, the supporters, the partners, whatever takuja along the way. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis.
This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. 